فعاش القلب إخلاصا وصرت تحومك الطير تحلق في ثقافات وتنهل بالرباء الخير. This audio is brought to you by Muslim Central. Please consider donating to help cover our running costs and future projects by visiting www.muslimcentral.com forward slash donate. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين. We praise Allah سبحانه وتعالى. We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, his household, his companions, and we ask Allah to bless them, to bless every one of us, to grant us ease. My brothers, my sisters, this is a Friday. A Friday is a blessed day because it has been granted that blessing by the one who made you and I. And we know that that is the maker of entire creation. I always say what connects me to the rest of creation is the fact that all of it has been made by the same maker. Just like you are a brother or a sister in blood to the ones who share the same parents, you are equally a brother and a sister to the rest of humanity, irrespective of the differences that you have with them, because not only have they been created by the same creator, but they are from the same source, and that is Adam, may peace be upon him, and Eve, or Hawa, alayhim as salam. And beyond that, we are also connected to the other creatures of the Almighty based on the fact that the same maker has chosen to make the other creatures too. Now, as you know, in life we do so many things, and mashallah, you guys at this beautiful hospital, I'm sure, are doing a lot of good work. Some of it is noticed, and some of it is not noticed. Generally, mankind notices the bad you do, they don't notice the good that you do. And in the same way, we don't like people to notice the bad, but that's what they notice, what happens is we should be having some hidden, secret, good deeds that the Almighty notices and others don't. So I invite you to do something very, very interesting. And that is, in the same way all of us, myself included, have sins we have committed in the past, sins that we may be committing, may Allah forgive us and grant us the strength to quit them, and sins that we may commit in the future due to our weakness, although they may be unplanned. May Allah strengthen us. In the same way that we have sins in the past, like I said, or the present, or perhaps in the future, let us all promise, a beautiful promise to Allah, that we will try our best, and it's not a difficult promise, we will try our best to have good deeds also that no one knows about. One day, between myself and my maker, as much as we know what bad deeds were done, he will see a pile of good deeds that only him and I know. This is called doing a deed solely and only for the pleasure of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will be surprised at how many people actually do have hidden good deeds. If the public gets to find out or if there is need for you to advertise the deed in order to encourage others or in order to ensure that the goodness is understood by people, that is a different issue. But here we're talking of so many good deeds, such as your prayers, such as a little charity, such as the recitation of the Qur'an, the, uh, the remembrance of Allah, and so many other things that you may do that are actually hidden. So that's the one promise we're all ready to make. May Allah grant me the ability to fulfill this promise and every one of us. I promise you it will change your life. As much as people might look at you and I and think, uh, either you're not a good Muslim or either you're an extreme Muslim, because people generally don't tend to... Uh, look at people as mainstream. They like to categorize. They either categorize you as a person who's not into the faith or someone who's so into it that you're, you're a judger. You begin to judge others and so on. We're, we're in a catch-22. But that set aside, inshallah, we can still do something about our own condition. And this evening or this afternoon, I want to talk to you about, besides that promise that we're going to make to Allah, I want to talk to you about promises that Allah has made. And wallahi, it's really going to make us feel good. Four promises that Allah makes in the Qur'an that should really wake us up. Who is Allah? He's the one who made me. He doesn't need me. I need Him. 
When a person makes a promise to you at the end of the week, you're going to get a salary. Aren't you excited? Don't you believe them? When they say you're going to be having an increment, don't you believe them? If someone says, you work for two months, if you work hard enough, not only will I pay you at the end of every month, but after two months, you're up for a 20% increase. And that's a good job, by the way. And after another year, you're up for another 20%. And if you work for two years, you're up for a promotion. We get excited. We're looking for these jobs, right? And we would work hard, wouldn't we? Who made the promise? Another human being just like you. And what happened to you and I? We were excited. We were happy. We were delighted. We looked forward to it. We worked hard without actually seeing the money initially. I work for 20, 30 days. I haven't yet seen anything. It was only based on a promise, right? I worked for 20, 30 days based on what? A promise. Well, this person's promised me that they're going to pay me X amount. When I get to 28, 29 days, I still haven't seen the money, but I start planning what I'm going to do with the money. And I start telling myself, I'm going to earn so much, and then I'm going to be able to do this, I'm going to be able to do that, and I will do this and do that. And guess what? If the money doesn't come, what happens to us? If it delays by a day or two, we get sad, depressed, stressed. I promise you, when the humankind has made that promise to us, we are so determined that we're prepared to work so hard for such a long time, which is 29 to 30 days, based on a human being's promise. But when Allah, the creator of the worlds, has promised us that you work in your life and I will give you, I will give you, then we are doubting that promise of Allah. We become weak in the way we look at that which Allah has promised as compared to how we look at what another human being has promised. Something worth thinking about, right? Where understand the promise of Allah is the truth. There is no chance, no way that Allah can promise you something and not deliver. I always speak about seeking forgiveness. One of the biggest sins, strange because you wouldn't have thought of this, one of the biggest sins is to seek the forgiveness of the most merciful, the most loving, the most kind, the most compassionate, the most beneficent, and then doubt that he's forgiven you. That's one of the biggest sins. When the Quran says, لا من رحمة الله, Don't ever lose hope in the mercy of Allah. Shaitan's trap is to make you commit the sin. And then when you have these warm tears roll down your cheeks and you start feeling for a while that I need to turn to Allah, shaitan is upset so he comes to you from another angle and that is to make you think, hang on, your tawbah is not acceptable. There is no verse of the Quran, there is no hadith where if a person genuinely seeks the forgiveness of Allah, is told that person is told your tawbah is not acceptable. You're genuinely seeking forgiveness of Allah. Allah loves it so much. He has promised you that forgiveness. So the four promises I want to address today. The first one is a promise of Allah that you have to believe. Convinced. Conviction. Like I said when I started, when human beings promise us, we believe them. Here's Allah. You know what he says? Promise number one. لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ if you are going to be thankful, I promise you, I will grant you increase. No way that that can go wrong. And you know, if you speak the Arabic language, you would know that the way Allah promises that increase is emphasized. It's emphasized. Allah didn't say, I will increase you. He says, I will definitely increase you. That mm that you hear is like saying, I will definitely increase you. Subhanallah. And that promise is from Allah. So how is this gratitude shown? It is shown by trying your best. I'm simplifying this, right? It is shown by trying your best to please Allah. That's it. It is shown by developing your relationship with Allah in the best possible way. Allah says, فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ مَا اسْتَطَعْتُمْ Develop your relationship with Allah in the way that you can do best. Subhanallah. Taqwa is to develop your relationship with Allah. 
to be conscious of Allah in the best possible way. This means I may dilly-dally sometimes, I may falter sometimes, human nature may take over sometimes. I'm not on the same level of spirituality every single day, but I do know I'm going to keep trying and I'm never going to lose hope in the mercy of Allah. Allah says, when you're thankful, you show gratitude, you obey my instructions as best as you can, you stay away from prohibitions, wherever you've fallen, you keep coming back by seeking forgiveness, I will grant you increase. I want you to pause for a moment. Wallahi, I'm swearing by Allah. We're about to read Salat al-Jumu'ah. Every single one of us, without an exception. Without an exception. Where were you 20, 30 years back and where are you today? Would you have dreamt 30 years ago that today you would be in this condition? Is it a better condition or a worse? Answer it. Subhanallah. I guarantee you, we tend to complain about the dips on our own graph while we're going higher and higher. It's just a dip. You know, when you see a dip in the graph, it doesn't necessarily mean everything's going bad. It means for a moment we're going down. We tend to concentrate on those dips such that we don't see the goodness Allah's bestowed upon us. If you're, if you're a little bit older, look at where you were 10, 20 years ago, sometime in your life before. Where were you and where are you today? Did Allah not give you izza? Did Allah not give you so much more? Did Allah not bless you? Did He not throw things at you? And here we are complaining. Allah says, I will give you increase. Keep trying and keep thanking Allah. May Allah grant us ease. The second promise. If you want to be remembered by Allah, and people normally say, unfortunately, due to weakness, they say, you know, I've been calling out to Allah, He doesn't listen to me. Na'udhu Billah. You know, I've been trying, I think Allah's forgotten me. Allah promises that He will take care of everything that moves, everything He has made. He says, وَمَا مِن دَابَّةٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ إِلَّا عَلَى اللَّهِ رِزْقُهَا one small part of the verse. There is nothing that moves on this earth except that Allah has taken it upon Himself to provide for it. If Allah is going to provide for the ants that might be walking somewhere near here, you and I are bigger than a million ants. Do you think Allah's missed you and He's got the ants? Impossible. So if you want Allah to remember you, there is a way to do it. Allah says, فَذْكُرُونِي أَذْكُرْكُمْ Remember me and I will remember you. That's the second. Second promise. You want Allah to remember you? Remember Allah. Another narration says, تَعَرَّفْ إِلَى اللَّهِ فِي الرَّخَائِ يَعْرِفْكَ فِي الشِدَّةِ Get closer to Allah. Get acquainted with Allah during your days of ease. And Allah will be acquainted with you during your days of hardship. Subhanallah. The third promise. Allah promises you something. أُدْعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ Call out to me, I'll answer you. Call out to me. Keep calling out to Allah. Call out for your needs. Don't think it's just you and your ability. Who gave you the ability? People say it was me, my intellect. Who gave you the intellect? What was Qarun's crime? He earned a lot, but he says it was only me. But who gave him the me that he's talking about? It was Allah. Allah can take it away in a flash. In the medical fraternity, I'm sure you know that a small thing that goes wrong with a nerve can change your entire life completely. And sometimes medicine can do zero about it. May Allah grant us ease and shifa. So Allah is saying, look, subhanallah, if you call out to me and keep calling out to me, it shows that you believe that I am the one who can give you what you want. That is worship. When you call out to Allah, it's acknowledging that you're worshipping the one. You believe He is the sustainer, the provider, etc., etc. So remember, always call out to Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your needs, no matter what they are, keep calling. The one point I want to raise before I go to the last uh, promise of, that we are going to speak about today. You know what? When you call out to Allah, don't ever say that perhaps, perhaps He hasn't heard me. He's heard you, but He's going to give you what you're asking for. Number one, if it's good for you. Number two, when the time is right for you. And if He knows it's not good for you, He's going to do something else for you. And if He knows the time is not right for you, He will delay it. And if He knows both are exactly where they are, He'll give it to you immediately. Subhanallah. We've all made dua sometimes, and Allah's given us things. Can I tell you how much Allah loves you? Most of what we have, we didn't even make a dua for. We've already got it. You thought of that? Most of what you have, you take for granted, I take for granted. But when we make a dua to Allah, remember it takes a while. Allah's testing your patience. 
You know, I always tell those who oppress others that subhanallah, my brothers and sisters, when a person whom we've oppressed makes a dua against us, Allah gives you a time. After that, He descends on you. What is the time for? For you to change, for you to seek forgiveness, for you to make amends. How many people we've been enemies and then we become friends later on. It's the help of Allah. But remember, Allah always listens to a dua. Always. It's just a matter of time before it clicks in. May Allah make it easy for us. And the last promise that we have to be discussed today is a promise where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ مُعَذِّبَهُمْ وَهُمْ يَسْتَغْفِرُونَ When you see the punishment of Allah coming, you need to know, Allah never ever punishes people who are busy seeking the forgiveness of Allah. If you are seeking the forgiveness of Allah, what you have is not a punishment of Allah. If you are struggling, what you have is not the punishment of Allah on condition that you are seeking the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we need to know that when a person goes through hardship and difficulty, it is closely connected to their condition internally. If you're struggling a little bit, we would all struggle going through hardship, but you're content in your relationship between you and Allah, you can never say this is a punishment. It's something better for you. How many people sickness brings them closer to Allah? How many people loss brings them closer to Allah? If that has brought you close to Allah, it was never ever a punishment of Allah. Allah cannot punish you while you're getting closer to Him. He will not do it, but it's a test to elevate you. Everyone's been through tests, including Rasulullah sallallahu So this is something very, very powerful. My brothers and sisters, I pray that every one of us can benefit from these promises that Allah's made to us. And to be honest, when I read the promises of Allah, I always tell myself, I would believe the promises if they had come from an honest human being. And I've met quite a few of them in my life. So to believe the promise of Allah is far greater and higher than that. May Allah strengthen our iman. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabina Muhammad.